Hello everybody and welcome to Skip Allen Paints and the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. Um, I thought I would take a look at Corel's uh, new Particle Shop plugin for Photoshop. Now I'm, I'm not really a Photoshop user and uh, so don't expect me to be extremely com comfortable in this particular program, but once we get to the plugin it should work pretty much like Painter and maybe I'll be more comfortable. I'm not really sure. I have not played with this a lot. I've just started kind of looking into it. Okay, the first thing I can tell you is that Particle Shop works on any layer that you have selected and it will destroy the layer. I mean, it's going to affect the layer when you save it. The layer will be changed. It's not uh, non-destructive. So what I did is I took my image and I duplicated the background uh, layer or the image itself. This is a, a photo that I took in uh, St. George Island. I'm not a photographer, but I, uh, I was at the state park and this uh, storm was coming in. And it was just sort of pretty. And so I took the picture. Now, what I wanted was I wished it had some rain, you know, dropping down from here um, or back in the distance. And that was not the case. So I thought, well, let's see if we can do this in particle shop. Okay. So that's the premise. Now, what I'm going to do is come up here to filter and particle shop. When you install it, it installs automatically into, uh, Photoshop CC 2015 or Photoshop CS six, um, Photoshop CS five. I'm not sure all of the different ones. It, uh, automatically installs in, but the most recent ones for sure. And so we come down here to Painter and then click on Particle Shop. You could have clicked on it up there if you had recently used it, which I had, but come down to Painter and then click on Particle Shop. Okay, now I have Photoshop set up so that it is um, a small... Uh, it's not full screen because I'm working with a video that is set up as um, HD or 10, uh, let's see, 1920 by 1080. So I want to make this fit the screen. So just give me a second here. That way we'll be able to see all of photo uh, particle shop. Okay, so unless you change this at startup and unclick that, what's going to pop up is an advertisement for brushes. And uh, these brushes, if you look, this one says dust and debris. And this is an example of using some of the brushes with dust and debris. And we click here and you would see what the um, uh, brush stroke looks like for each one of these. Sorry, let me catch that. I will pause it and be back. Well, it rang once, so we're back. All right, so if we go to Flame, this is an example of what Flame does, and these would be the uh, uh, brush strokes. So you can run down the list. This is Fabric Fantasy, so all of this would have been done with uh, the brush. Fine Arts, I think, is really pretty. They've taken a photograph and then started turning it into a drawing on this side, which is pretty neat. Um, and you, you can just go down and see what each one of these looks like. Spaced out, um, storm. So you can see that there's stuff added. My guess is this... Uh, Splash is added. I feel pretty certain that's added. And probably the misty stuff in the back, uh, the stormy look, is probably added. Okay, so I'm going to close this now. And we're going to go to what's here. The thing that you'll want to know about first is the about and help is down in this corner. It took me a minute to find that. I don't know why, but it just wasn't expected. You can click on the online help, and that's really, really helpful because I had trouble getting started with this. Um, and my online help popped up in on another screen, so let me drag it down here. So you have this online help, and you have all of these things, how to address my brush, brush size and all of that sort of thing here. So uh, it's a, it looks like it's pretty extensive. I've looked through some of it, um, and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to close that for the moment and close this because I don't think I need it. Now, here we have the color wheel. 
And then we have the eyedropper, we have the blender, we have an eraser, and we have the brush um, tool. This resets, I believe, the whole document. Uh, we don't need the cleaner showing. Okay, I uh, believe that um, resets the whole document. This is undo and redo. And then this would be reset the brush tool or whatever tool you might be working on. This would be to reset it. For brushes, this is your brush size. And this is kind of neat here. If you click on that, it changes the brush size with pressure. So heavy pressure would increase the size. Less pressure would decrease the size. This is um, brush opacity. And this is uh, value variability. Hmm. Value variability. What brush am I on? I'm on fur. I'm not sure what that means exactly, so we'd ha I'd have to try that out to see. Let's get another brush. What if we, uh, what if we go to this debris brush? All right. So with debris, we still have size. We have um, brush opacity. This is the weight, so it, is, it sets the opacity of the particle pass. Used together with weight jitter, it adds depth to the pass, and this would be weight jitter here. So you can control these two to make a difference. And this is your um, zoom tool, so you can go in and uh, look at the object closer. I still want to try something else. Let's... I know a particular brush that I'm going to use in, uh, it's in, oh, by the way, let me show you what we're looking at. We're, these, I, you know, I have all of the brushes that are available, but you get a starter pack. That's what this is. So you get 11, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 11 brushes for free. All the rest of the brushes you'd have to buy, but you've got 11 good brushes here for free. Now I'm going to go to Storm. And I'm going to click on this heavy fog because what it does is it gives you the option of grain. So if you increase this, then you would get more grain. And not only that, it gives you some paper textures. And I thought when I saw this, I thought, well, these must be papers in Photoshop. But they're not. These are papers right out of Painter. And so we're, if you use Painter, you'll be very familiar with this uh, set of papers. It's pretty cool. Okay, so what I wanted to do was to make this kind of soft and let some rain come down from it. So I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to click on the uh, color wheel. And it pops out and it works like the color wheel and painter. This is the hue ring, and this would be the value uh, saturation triangle. Um, and you can change the blush brush to glow here, which would make it begin to glow. But a glow brush looks best if it's on a dark surface. Now, what's interesting about this is when you start to paint, it's going to go away. Now, I want to get rid of that. Control Z would undo. But we do have the undo button up here. Uh, however, you can pin it. If you click on that, it's going to pin the object. And now it's not going to move when you uh, uh, start to paint. Now I'm going to let it get away. And I'm actually going to select a fairly dark color. We're almost in 10 minutes, so I have to do this pretty fast. And I want to go back up to the brush. Now, uh, just like I think in Photoshop, if you hit the B, it will take you to the brush, brush tool. I don't know that for a fact. I know that is in Painter, you can hit the B. All right, so I've got this dark color. And this brush is set up to opacity is set to pressure. So remember how dark that was. And the heavier the pressure the darker the color becomes. So I'm bringing that kind of dark blue in here with a lighter color near the bottom, kind of like that. OK, so let's get another color. We're going to pick, uh, let's pick some of this gray here. Go back to the brush tool 
and put that in. That's a kind of a blue-gray. Uh, let's see. I want some more of that dark color. Uh, so I'll pick that. That's a little bluer. And I'm just going to kind of bring it up into here. Uh, and I'll take some of that color and just bring it down into this like that. Now we have that blender tool. Now there's some brushes that actually blend, but let's check out this blender tool. Now this is, it actually is larger than this. I played with it a few minutes ago and I haven't reset it, but it's a very nice blender. It blends with pressure. As I increase the pressure, it blends a little more, kind of a uh, smudgy blend, but it's uh, it's not a bad blend at all. I'm going to come down here and sort of soften this edge with the blender. I don't want it to be too spotty. And I want to soften it out here. It would be nice if I was had some image that I was looking at so I could, I'm just trying to remember what this rain of clouds look, uh, this flat line of rain clouds look like. Okay, well that gives you an idea of how it goes. We're at 11 minutes. I'm taking too much time. Let's go to heavy fog. I mean, we were in heavy fog. Let's go to, let's try soft rain. Okay, so I want to see what my color is, and I know I don't want it to be blue. I want it to be in the grayer colors, and I don't want it to be very bright. Opacity is to a pressure, so uh, that's a little bit big. <laughs> so we take the brush down to, let's try about 9 or 10. That's better. And if you notice, as I drag it across the edge, it kind of brings some of that color with it. So it's it's taking my edge and bringing that straight edge and bringing the color down with it, which I kind of like. Now I'm going to increase the size a little bit. Well, that was not increasing it. Let's keep trying about 27. And I want to make this a little darker. Pressure will make it darker, but I'm going to use a little bit darker color. The brush is a little bit big. There we go, but that's too, too big. Let's see. So I'm having to find the right pressure. I, I you know, in in Painter, we have a brush tracker that we can set the pressure uh, based on our real pressure. And you don't have that in Photoshop. You 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 set the pressure, oops, on the Wacom. Um, and, and that's good. That's It works well. But um, it's not quite as sensitive as what you get in Painter. So I'm, uh, you know, I know that Painter brushes are very sensitive to uh, pressure. So you might have to get used to that if you're not, if you haven't been a painter user. Ah, that's not what I want. I want it to be kind of a little darker there, but not real linear. That looks pretty good. I want it to be a little bit transition to be a little stronger there. Let me take the brush down. There we go. Now I've got that kind of out. All right, so now what I've got is that kind of look and feel of the rain falling. Now, this is not a great image, of course, but, you know, you get the idea of how it works. I'm actually thinking this is kind of fun. <laughs> but anyway, it gives you an idea of, of how Particle Shop uh, does work. So the next thing we would do is we would click Save, and that would bring it back in, and we would have this in 
uh, Photoshop proper now, and we could do anything we wanted to. We might want to add a, a you know, a, a, a mask or something and do other things or add other layers, do all the things that you know that, how to do in, in Photoshop that I don't know. But anyway, it gives you a quick little look at uh, Particle Shop, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's not a bad program. All right. Talk to you later.